Welcome to MEMA Aftermarket Suppliers Road Ahead. I'm Paul McCarthy, President and CEO of your association, and we like to kick this off with a short take on one of MEMA's recent thought leadership pieces, and there is no better example than our study on the shop of the future. And this study was conducted by MEMA Aftermarket with Milwaukee, where Sherry Hamilton has the largest shop association in America, along with our friends at Roland Berger. So with me today are the two leaders of Roland Berger's North American aftermarket practice, Barry Neal and Nuri Freitas. And the shop is the end customer for most of what you manufacture and supply. So understanding where our customers are going is something that we have emphasized is vital for suppliers to have market leverage and margin. So let's talk a little about what will change at shops going forward. So Barry and Nuri, what do you see as the top two changes in shops that this report highlights? So during this report, what we really wanted to go about discovering was understanding how shops are preparing what we see as two major drivers of change in the industry. Uh, the first we wanted to look at was in terms of the um, technology that shops are having the service in terms of vehicles. So understanding, looking at um, ADAS, um, in automation, what are some of the key requirements in terms of diagnostics and calibration that shops really need to prepare for and invest on, um, as well as looking at electric vehicles in terms of PEV, you know, what are the different investments that shops do be making there to prepare for EVs as they continue to penetrate our park in the future? And then the second piece we really wanted to understand was coming particularly out of COVID and looking at consumer requirements in terms of both the expectations around digital interaction uh, both for the repair, during the repair, and, and post-repair, um, as well as the new expectations around touchless service, um, including elements like concierge service, but also the mobile services that are becoming more popular with OEMs. Yeah, the mobile trend is absolutely fascinating. So, Nuri, what came out of the study? Are our shops, are they ready? Are they prepared for what's coming, and, and what can we do to help? Thank you, Paul. Um so some shops are prepared, but clearly not all shops are prepared. Um, we ran an extensive survey with the Milwaukee members. And then from those members, we saw that 22% of all shops, they have already made some investments in serving EV vehicles. It can be installing a charger. It can be buying equipment required not to, to have risks with electric shocks. And then when it goes to the ADA side, only 15% of the shops, they have already made investments, right? And then when we ask those shops, like why you haven't made in th those investments yet? So some shops, they would say, we are still not seeing those vehicles, but for those that they are already receiving some of those vehicles in their shops, they say that they have a lack of far space or the way the shops they are set up, it's not ideal. Um, they have some concerns about receiving and installing those equipment, so they don't have the technical knowledge. And of course, they are also constrained about the required financial means to make for those investments. So that's a lot for them. So will shops in the future, will they be able to work on everything or will they need to focus on a few technologies? It's a good uh, question, and certainly, as you know, Nuri noted, there are some shops that, that are making those investments um, today already. However, at the same time, we, we do foresee that, similar to what you see more in the collision space today, um, you are going to, in the mechanical space, start to see a heavier reliance on, on sublet activity um, and, and more pure B2B shops providing support on the back end to shops to ensure they can really cover the full spectrum of both EV um, and ADAS technologies. Um, and so we're already seeing that that today um, in the form of ADAS calibration and a number of specialists there, both with, with mobile and in, in, in stable environments. And we expect to see additional in the EV space um, as that area starts to, to grow and penetrate the park. Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, when we've had new technology in the past, automatic transmissions, when they came, they were specialists. And I know those ADAS specialists are doing fairly well from what I hear. So let's take this up to the aftermarket supplier level. What's the number one takeaway for us, for suppliers from this study? Okay, Paul. Well, let me start with that and then Barry can complement. I'll just add one additional piece of what the shops are really worried about. We've been talking about that as, as 
as the industry, which is labor shortage. So you will see that some of those things that the shops they will have to do or the suppliers they will have to do or they could do to help the shops, they are related to that as well, right? So the first thing that some companies they are already trying to do um, uh, is to improve the catalog information, right? And a lot of companies, they've been discussing how they can use AI to accelerate that. So that's something that will be able to help make sure that all the information is embedded and that the shops, they can find the parts they need. And once they order the parts, they're going to get the parts on time. And then you, re you reduce the returns as well. Um, the second thing is that the suppliers, they could make sure that they are helping um, and easing the process to make automatic uh, parts distribution, right? So if you have all the links from the shops to the distributors, to the suppliers, and the entire part ordering flows automatically, that can speed um, the overall service time and make everyone um, happy, right? Um, the other thing that will be very important as well is to the extent that it's possible, how can suppliers work with the OEMs as well and work am among themselves to reduce the skew complexity, right? The mm -hmm. shops, they are facing a big challenge that you have like many options that they could fit or they should fit. Um, and that creates like a nightmare for the distributors and for the shops to deal with that as well. And then integrating the diagnostic with the ordering of the parts, that's something that would help a lot. So you have the equipment manufacturers working with the suppliers, working with the distributors, right? Now you have a diagnostic happening in the car, you have already the recommended parts, and then those recommended parts, once they are fulfilled, they come together with, for example, a video that has instructions. Because if you go to a shop right now, what those technicians they are doing, they are accessing YouTube to see how all the technicians they've done that in the past. This is not pro this is not a fully professional, right? Uh, uh, the suppliers they could help a lot tying the part that is being sold with the instructions on how to get those parts installed. Well, that's powerful. This is <clears throat> certainly a lot we can do to make this easier and more seamless for shops in a more complicated world and opportunity for that great aftermarket entrepreneurship. Barry, any final words on what suppliers should do now? I think when we look to suppliers and what they should do now, though, you know, one thing they should take away is that, you know, despite uh, the complexity of new things in ADAS, new things in EV, new expectations around consumers, that that the independent shops are, are making the investments and in, in doing what they need to do to be able to service a thriving aftermarket in the future. Um, and so, you know, suppliers should look to things that they can do to help them in terms of training on the new technologies, yes. uh, making sure that there are independent aftermarket parts available in the new technologies and help them be cost competitive um, against the dealers as they, as they move forward, um, as well as, as helping with some of the new digital interaction, digital tools, um, particularly from as we look from the supplier base, but also to our some of our trade partners. As, as the buying groups and the distributors can support those shops um, in making some of those digital transitions. Yeah, that's great advice. That's what we hear from the customers. Got to have the parts. We got to have the training. And we got to have the technology. Be ready technologically. And, uh, and as always, it's partnership that creates these solutions. So thank you for these great insights, Barry and Nuri. We really appreciate it. By the way, Roland Berger will be conducting a much more in-depth webinar on these findings for us on February 8th. So sign up now to learn more and remember this and many other fantastic studies to help our members be ahead of the curve. They're available on our website. We hope you enjoy all the insights in this issue of The Road Ahead and thank you for all that you do to help our aftermarket industry prepare for the future and to grow and thrive. And let's all have a very prosperous 2024.